shall expiate by, be, by freeing a slave before they resume intercourse. This is to admonish you. God is cognizant of everything you do. If you cannot find a slave to free, then you shall fast two consecutive months before resuming intercourse. And these unable to fast shall feed sixty poor persons. This is for you to believe in God and His Messenger. These are God's laws, and the rejectors have deserved painful retribution. Those who oppose God and His Messenger are doomed like those before them who were doomed. We have revealed clear revelations, and the disbelievers therein have deserved painful retribution. The day will come when God resurrects them, then informs them of everything they have done. God has recorded it, while they forgot. God witnesses all things. Do you, do you not realize that God knows everything in the heavens and the earth? No three people can meet in secrecy without him being the fourth. No five without him being the sixth. No less than this, no more, without him being there. Then on the day of resurrection, he will inform them of everything they did. God is fully aware of all things. Those who are prohibited from conspiracy then go back to it, conspiring sinfully, maliciously, and in defiance of the messenger. And when they come to you, they greet you not with God's greetings, and say to themselves, Let us see if God will punish us for what we say. Their only destiny is hell, wherein they burn. What a miserable destiny. <clears throat> o you who believe, if you, if you have to confer secretly, you shall not confer to commit sin, transgression, and disobedience to the messenger. You may confer only to work righteousness and piety. Beware of God, for you will be gathered before him. I will stop there. Alright, first one. God has heard the woman who debated with her about her husband and complained to God. Those among you who estrange their wives as if they were their mothers are doing wrong. Um, obviously this is in, in the Quran for a reason. God, um, as, as the footnote says, a common statement by Arabian husbands who wanted to punish their wives was, You are as forbidden from, to me in intercourse as my mother. Okay, that obviously, it obviously applied to that, to that point in time in history where this was a, a common thing to where it needed to be said. But as we know, the Quran is for every day, and it applies at all times. So, what these verses are saying, we should obviously take to heart. <laughs> okay. Um, those who estrange their wives in this manner, then reconcile, shall, be, shall expiate by freeing a slave before they resume intercourse. This is to admonish you. There again, Obviously, we don't have slaves or or things like this today, but the point is well taken about the relationship that should exist between a husband and a wife, and how how regardless of the circumstances, how a person should treat his wife. Okay, if you cannot find a slave, then you shall pass two consecutive months before resuming intercourse. Um, like this, this is just straightforwardness here, um, telling you or telling the people of this. This applies to what they need to do to receive reconciliation. <clears throat> okay, those who oppose God and His messenger are doomed like those before them who are who are doomed. We have revealed clear revelations, and the disbelievers therein have deserved painful retribution. It, this verse is is just tremendous. When God says we have revealed clear revelations, and the disbelievers therein have deserved painful retribution, when He says clear, He means clear. The the Quran comes. The Quran is straightforward, and it says what it, you know. It's what it says is what it means. You when you read it, you don't have to. I mean, it's so fully detailed that you don't have to look to any other outside sources to, to find the meaning of it. It's right there. The Quran is complete. You don't need the Hadith, the Sunnah, the Bible. Plus, the Quran confirms these, these previous scriptures. So, uh, there's no need for them, excluding the Hadith and Sunnah. So, when you see people that are rejecting this on the basis of one thing or another... It's, they truly deserve, or they will receive, um, their due, their due, 
they are dead. The day will come when God resurrects them and informs them of everything they have done. God has recorded it while they forgot. God witnesses all things. Uh, this verse is, tells what a lot of verses have, and it's been well discussed in here in terms of God recording everything, and God knows everything that we do. Nothing goes, nothing goes without. <laughs> okay, nothing goes, nothing happens, or in anything, in any place on this earth without God knowing about it. From everything, from the ant moving to the actions of the challenger, anything, anything. God, when God, when you say God has recorded it, that means God knows your actions before you've even committed them. God, everything has been recorded before they, they even took place. But when we say this, lots of times we know in the Quran that God controls everything here in this mosque. And God controls everything on the earth. Um, but in the same sense, um, you have a, you, when you um, decide that you want to be a believer, you're making a covenant with God. And you have to hold up your end of the deal. You have, you have an obligation in which you're saying, I, yes, I will pray five times a day. Yes, I will give to charity. You have obligations that you have to do. You have to hold up the commandments. You have to be a righteous person. Okay, that doesn't... So that means just because God controls everything and God knows what's going to happen and everything is pre-recorded doesn't mean you can sit back and relax. Like, like, um, a sticker on the... bumper sticker on the car outside. I was looking at it uh, a couple days ago and it says, Relax, God's in charge. Okay, that means... To me, I took that and I thought, relax, God's in charge. What does that mean? Relax, sit back, God's in charge. No, it means relax your emotions. Don't worry about anything because God's in control. But that doesn't mean that your end of the deal, you don't have to hold up your end of the deal. You understand know what I'm saying? It's not like you can just, okay, well, we'll just relax and I'll sleep from <laughs> 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. the next day. Um, so we have an obligation to God, and, and that extends into everything we do. God wants us to be the best we can and put forth the maximum effort in everything we do. Um, we just, I discussed this with um, Mr. Khalifa about, well, why, why should we want to achieve in, in everyday life? Why should we want to be a success? Why should a person want to go to college and get an education or make money or all, all these things? Because they're relevant. In retrospect, they're not really important. All that's important in this life is our relationship to God. And realizing that, that's when you, these other things can become important. Because a, a wealthy believer, he said, can do more good than a poor believer. They can help more people. They can, can do more things. Not that one is better than the other, but just the capability of, of giving more to charity and things like this. It's greater if you have more wealth, naturally. And and with that in mind, also, God wants us to do our best in everything we do. And when it comes to our jobs, it's a matter of thinking about God in your job. That becomes, that becomes our goal, to be conscious of God at all times. So you're going to work, but you're realizing that or you're completely conscious of God at all times within your work. That's, that's what we're talking about, of not idolizing anything else. When you, when you set these goals, set these goals with the ultimate plan of, of being righteous in mind in your relationship with God. I, I kind of got stuck in that verse, because that's when I understood. I could elaborate on that one a little bit longer. <laughs> okay. Do you not realize that God knows everything is in the heaven and the earth? No three people can meet in secrecy without him being the fourth. Nor five. This is goes along the same lines. God knows everything. God is completely cognizant of all things. You can't meet in private. You can't. You know. It, it just God. God knows everything, and everything is recorded. <laughs> okay. Those who are prohibited from conspiracy then go back to conspiring simply, maliciously, and in defiance of the messenger. Um. I. Didn't really understand this. Those who are prohibited from conspiracy, who is, who is 
who would that be? Those would be from conspiracy. Conspiracy in terms of. Uh, this is the meeting secret. Okay, so people, so in a society where you are prohibited from meeting in, in secret? No, or, or let's say yeah, three or four of us are sitting somewhere and they say, let's not go to the Firing simply, maliciously, and in defiance of the messenger. <laughs> then they, then let us see if God will punish us for what we say. Here again, you see people testing God, and obviously, I mean that's not. The Actually, thing we have these things happen here in the past, and uh, those people are not here anymore. <laughs> they're just, uh, yeah, troublemakers, and they want. Oh, you who believe, if you have to confer secretly, you shall not confer to commit sin, transgression, and disobedience to the messenger. You may confer only to work righteousness and piety. Beware of God, for you will be gathered before him. That is just always keeping in mind that the day of resurrection is coming. Regardless of where you meet or the circumstances with which you meet, remember always to be righteous and pious. Okay, any questions, comments? Um, this past thing at first was this kind of the same man that we observed by Yes. Okay, I think uh, the, uh, the custom of exchanging the wife if she's the mother, it's kind of unfair to the wife, especially in the society where there is uh, polygamy. <laughs> One wife is left hanging. She's not free to marry somebody else. She's not correct to get the rights as a wife. So God is ending that uh, practice. Mm. And uh, in verse 3, we see the Quran's uh, solution to the slave problem. Where slavery was, uh, was a practice, we practiced this country until 200 years ago. 200, 100 years ago. And uh, the Quran's method is the most effective and the best method economically because if you free half a million slaves all at once, they will not be able to do it. And so the Quran made it. For expiation or atonement for sins. So it be a uh, gravity. And uh, Robert said we were having slaves, so it works. <laughs> so the guy who was sitting in the, in the bus or something was just clapping like this. And somebody asked uh, what they were clapping for. So he said, uh, well, this, uh, this keeps the elephants away. I said, there's no elephants. <laughs> the nearest elephant is 3,000 miles from here, so see, it's worse. <laughs> so, there are no slaves now because this method works. And uh, in the next verse, the verse says, if you cannot find a slave, so if you don't have a slave of your own, you can, you can always go and uh, actually find the slave anywhere and, uh, and free pay, pay for his freedom. Nicholas? Do these verses also refer to situations where the wife is married to the husband? It seems that a wife should not treat her husband as if she could have found something like that. I don't think that, uh, that uh, custom exists. So it is, uh, sometimes it's a facto. It's called headache. Instead of <laughs> <laughs>
So it's just not not just being conscious of God, but also being conscious of the God God put uh, to, to God you and God your children and the God all your affairs. Prohibiting the conspiracy. So uh, God says in Surah 42 that the whole Surah is tied to consultation. And this is, uh, alhamdulillah, we already achieved this. We are all just one unit. And we will we, we become one family. Day after day, Friday after Friday, we are the same people for a meeting dedicated. And, uh, it's been wonderful. We are just become a family. So uh, we don't have this problem yet. Yes, but God taught us what this is, the past. And when people here to try to take a vote in some use opposition, we get some details. The way God put it, you can't really notice if you read a million times. It's so fluent. You can't see the image. How do you say uh, two people, one to be the third? So, so these numbers, what the Lord is emphasizing, so the numbers are part of the mathematical code. 
Actually, the reason that God didn't start from two because the the verse ends with it says no less than this, no yes. more. If it start with two, there is no less of two because you can't have one people. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
from the devil, one causing problems to <coughs> only causing problems to those who believe. Though he cannot harm them against the will of God, in God the believers shall trust. O you who believe, if you are asked to make room for others <coughs> to sit down with you, you shall make room, that God, may, that God may make room for you. If you are asked to leave, you shall leave. God raises those among you who believe and those who attain knowledge to higher ranks. God is fully cognizant of everything you do. O oh, you who believe, if you wish to confer with the messenger, you shall give away a and they who literally swear lies. God has prepared for them severe retribution. Evil indeed is what they did. They use their oaths as a cover to repel others from the path of God. Consequently, they have deserved humiliating retribution. Never will their monies or children help them against God. They will have deserved hell wherein they abide forever. On the day when God resurrects them, they will swear to him, just as they swear to you, and they will think <coughs> they have some basis. Indeed, they are liars. The devil possessed, possessed them and persuaded them to neglect God's message. These are the party of the devil. The party of the devil are losers. Those who oppose God and his messenger are the lowliest. God has decreed, I and my messengers will always win. God is powerful, almighty. Okay. <clears throat> and here we're here again we're talking about conspiracy as <clears throat> as being from the devil. Conspiracy I think the conspiracy then meaning plotting, plotting against to to do to wrong. Right. Okay. Good. I wish I could think of something specific. Because those happened a lot years ago. Because can you also look at yeah, that's what I was talking about. Right. Last right. night, right. right. yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Some people decide that they want to have a separate Quranic study and to look at the other translations and uh, just break away from the separate mind. They did, and they're all done. The action they took was what personally stressed me out, and that's not really against the contribution of being in trouble after the past. You know, he was against totally you being in charge. That's, that's typical being so uh, against that to a God. Not just you know, the one that God has chosen as the messenger to be in charge. <coughs> Remember, he wanted it's coming to me now, man. Yeah, he, he came. One with chronic studies with the whole to debate it. He was he was fooled by somebody that we know was the FBI and so forth. We didn't mind being here. He fooled the fact that we remember this detail. And they're all gone. So that's the kind of experience, it's not good, it's divided the group. There's no good results. It's amazing, by the way. The, the, when these things happened, people went and they had their own Quranic uh, study to them. They came out with the strangest conclusion. <laughs> From the same Quran, it, uh, I can tell you that Satan gets hold of them and produce the issue. And eventually, I will remember some of the ideas that came out. It's a very strange idea. And you know it makes sense. And it makes sense. The sight can write this meaning from this verse. That's what it's saying. 
Not harm them against the will of God. In God, the believers shall trust. Um, that's right there, quite an impressive sentence. In God, the believers shall trust. That right there should put everybody's mind at ease when you're worried about things of any matter, whether it be daily life to anything. Oh, you who believe, make room for those who sit, sit down so that God may make room for you. Now, to me, um, this verse, I thought I, what I thought of it as, as being righteous when someone, to make room for somebody else to sit down, you're, I'm um, sure we speak, you let somebody else sit down, and that God will make room for you in heaven. That's, did this apply to, I, that could be from my background or something, that where, uh, clothe, clothe, clothe the needy, feed the hungry, this type of... I, that's what came to mind when I read this verse. I don't know if that's... If that's along the same lines, but that's how I applied it. Especially the part that God may make room for you. And I, thought, I thought that was in terms of... Actually, it happened now. Yes, it was your own. Find a place to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you ask somebody to move? Did you have to ask somebody to move? <laughs> but it's possible for you to get anyone. You can he comes in and finds him. There's nobody. There's no room. You ask somebody who can take my room. And they can take it or they cover it. It's just a piece of it as deep as it is. Exactly. Deep kind of 
And secondly, and applauding the Catholic Church. Okay. Now I say, La ilaha illallah. The Catholic Church says, Praise Mary, Mother of God. So it is not an issue of worshiping God, it's, uh, it's politics or something. How can they applaud the Catholic Church for anything? Because the Catholic Church itself practices the same thing that the Romanian practices. They don't like people to write about their uh, shroud of Turin and all the nonsense that they have. And they have heavy censorship. They, uh, they excommunicate people right to left because of their opinions. So they are uh, you can see uh, how how would that look for people like this applauding people who are saying praise Mary Mother of God. And, some, and condemning somebody who says la ilaha illallah, so anybody who allies himself with those people, God is angry with them. And this is verse uh, 15. God has declared to them severe retribution, even if he does not They're saying that um, there are those who ally themselves with people who have angered God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the very mother of God, the Lord is with me. Blessed are thou, Jesus. Should I just read this last verse? Because right. if, if you wanted to discuss the other... Yes. Thing, okay. Yeah, and then... Yes. Well, that's alright. There's only one verse left. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, verse 22. Run for your life. You will not find people who believe in God in the last day befriending those who oppose God and His messenger, even if, even if they were their own parents or children or siblings or family. God places faith into their hearts as he supports them with inspiration. He will admit them into the gardens with flowing streams when they abide forever. God is pleased with them, and they are pleased with him. They are the party of God, and the party of God are winners. This verse is incredibly strong, I think, <laughs> just from looking at 
Mr. Bleep is on situation. Um, this this really truly proves if you're a believer if you can ally yourself with God, even when your family is an obstacle for you. Um, that's that's truly showing that you're a believer. That is confirming to yourself when you can put God above all things, especially someone that's so close as your family. And when it's when those people feel that they are doing the right things themselves, um, God is the one. As you go go back, in God the believer shall trust. That that says it all right there. And you have to put God above everything else, regardless of who it is. And to do this is oftentimes very difficult. But if you truly truly believe, then you'll be in the party of God who are winners. Thank you. This, this answers your question earlier about you. You asked, you know, about the people that pose as a messenger. And here it is, the verse says, You will not find the people who believe in God, and the last day be threatening those who oppose God and his messenger. We have not, uh, in any kind of a way, been forced to practice religion. Rather, open-minded family, I'm proud of them. But in my heart, I've been always searching. I told uh, Dr. Khalifa, I was 16 years old, when I felt like I want to go to a masjid. I did. The second time I went to the masjid, I was uh, turned off. Because... Uh, it wasn't for me. Things that I heard, it was not simply logical. Of course, I'm 46 now, but I've been growing up. I've gone through so much. You know, you all know how we go through the steps. We get busy with other matters. We come and go. But one thing uh, never went away from me. It was my thirst for God. And then later on, I got very, very interested in Quran. I don't know the reason, of, but I was just very interested. It sounds uh, a little off. A man comes from Tehran, Iran, and he finds God in the United States of America. I call that destiny. It was in 1983, or perhaps, I believe it was 1983, somehow, some kind of way, I came uh, across with 1 and 9, makes it number 19, and I was fascinated. I was fascinated. I, that's why I went ahead and got a word on, and I was going around and bragging about it. Hey guys, actually I was talking to a Jewish fellow one time, Iranian guy, and I didn't know he was Jewish. And I was telling him, look, look, what do you want? I mean, this is it. This is it. And he even didn't tell me you were Jewish. Why did I have to say you were how old? So, uh, but as I said, as it comes and it goes, the first wave didn't knock me out, but just warmed me up. And, uh, but again, I'm in transportation business. If you all ever come to Atlanta, they, you can ask who KE is. They call me KE. I, I owned the second largest taxi fleet in town, but I sold it, of course, and I'm happy. I still have much to be thankful. If you ask him what his radio number is, they're going to tell you it's 19. I have a property very close to downtown. It is on Highway 19. And inshallah, I've got good plans. I'm not coming to Tucson to live in here, but my goodness, I envy you in a way. My heart is with you. But I'll tell you one thing. You will come to the masjid in Atlanta, inshallah. It was a few months ago. Again, I don't know what happened. I was just, I want to go on again. I mean, never gave it up. But I, this time, I really wanted it. I mean, I wanted Quran. So, I went through my papers. I found a, 
address of uh, Master Tucson again, wrote a letter, asked for a few books, and I got them. But this time, it knocked me out. It knocked me out. I talked to uh, Dr. Khalifa many times, uh, I think it's a few times on the phone actually. I told him when I was telling him, I have no doubt, I never meant that I never doubted you. When I was saying, I said, I don't doubt, I have no doubt that we're on is indeed that communication which is direct. I didn't know that he had made any announcement actually at the time. This came to me about three, three and a half, three, max four weeks ago. But let me say this to you. Without even the announcement, I was intelligent enough to see that, my goodness, it's got to be something. Now, if you all asleep tonight and tomorrow you see a flying saucer in here in Tucson, Arizona, and the crowds go around it and there's no door, you can't figure it out. Then all of a sudden somebody from the crowd steps forward and he goes towards it and does something and the door opens and he gets in it and he flies around and maneuver around and he lands it again. Don't you believe that somehow those who made the flying saucer taught him something? He got some kind of a training from them. It's a simply simple logic. So in the back of my mind, I was saying that, well, it's got to be something special. He's blessed. He's blessed. So, the, the, it was 8th of February uh, publication, Muslim Perspectives, when I got it, and it says, only, give me only one reason. Dr. Khalifa, that was the first time I looked at what you said. So, hey, I'm fresh. <laughs> and only one reason. I produced so many Quranic evidences, proofs. You just give me one simple reason. And not for a second, you know, backed off. Didn't back off, even though I was expecting it. But I, uh, I loved it. I loved it. And I loved it. I just decided, I said, hey, oh, sure, don't overdo it, don't love it too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's a, that's a field, you probably, I make another Jesus Christ, or you know, love it, man, man. You see, you go through these things, and things do make sense. They asked Prophet Muhammad, bring a ladder, go up to the heaven, bring the whole book together, show it to us. The miracles are performed, of course, but again, Records come on in all different forms of, uh, and fashions. I am simply overwhelmed. I have a good friend of mine, Andy Boat, and uh, we were talking uh, with a co couple of Sunni Muslims and uh, a couple of Shi'is. And uh, the Sunnis asked, you know, they wanted to at least eliminate some of the opposition to what they were saying. They said, well, he looks like blonde and American. Well, you must be Christian. He says, no, I'm hoping to become a Muslim. So I am a believer. I have uh, no doubt. As I said, two things I know. I don't expect him to perform miracles every second. I know he's a human. I know he's going to make mistakes. The rest of them did. And I make sure that I control my emotions. I think I have overcome that. I will stay in Atlanta, and I think I have got my work cut up for me. I think uh, God has blessed me with a wonderful family. I don't see I've got any weaknesses, I am not sure, but I think I'm okay. And I'm uh, situated that I do good things. I've got good plans. I am going to be naturally communicating every step that I take with Dr. Khalifa to have his coaching and his approval. And inshallah, I'm looking forward to the good things. I feel God. 
uh, an experience that I'd like to share with you. I've been always strong in my life. I may, I, my, my frame is not all that big, but I've, even physically I've been strong. I cannot be intimidated. I do my prayer regularly. Yes, since when? When I said, well, yes, he is indeed the messenger. So even when I was going to pray, I said, no, I've got to get to the point. I want to know how. I should pray exactly because I, the prayer that I used to do was a little different, not a whole lot. So I waited until I got the tapes and everything. Since then, I have been praying five times a day. And truly, like he says, that this contact prayer, it is not good. It's not for God. It is simply, you establish that contact. It is a it is, it is the way you nourish your your own self, you, your true self. I feed me like I feed my garment, like I exercise to keep my body trim. So, therefore, I want to exercise my mind and grow. I've been talking to my wife lately, and she says, Oh, so you're beginning to sound like Richard. I, I hope not. It is what I feel. It is my love and for my family. One thing I've made clear that I love him so much, but definitely for sure, God is number one. The experience I had, like Dr. Khalifa said, there's a giant next to you protecting it. Anybody doubts that? Anybody is doubting that? I, I go to the masjid on 14th Street and do my prayer. And since the time I, I prayed 